Hey, welcome to the H Team. I'm the chef. And I'm the situation. You might wonder why I'm all dressed up, all dapper and looking good. It's not because of him, I'll tell you that. Uh, it's actually because we were gonna do uh, something near and dear to my heart. We're gonna talk a little bit about the 50 years of the Camaro. And we thought today we would talk a little bit about the first generation Camaro, which my generation is in love with. Uh, we just absolutely love the first gen Camaro. I think the first generation Camaro, honestly, because my girlfriend, that's like her dream car, is the 1967 Camaro. And I think that like even people my age really like it's it's just a it's a classic. It's yeah, it was born a classic. Right? It, it was, uh, a little bit of background. Uh, again, 1966. That's when uh, they started designing, and Chevy thought we need to come up with a car to go alongside with the Mustang. Right. Trying to figure out where they actually came up with the name Camaro. There's several different things out there flying around. Um, you can't find it in a dictionary in any language. It's not a word. It's it's not a word. Um, you know, if you go to, I think it was Urban Dictionary or whatever, it's a mythological creature that devours Mustangs, which I kind of like. Yeah, I mean, right. it's kind of neat, right. but it's not true. Uh, the best thing that we came up with was... We found out that uh, one of the, probably one of the most accepted theories was way back in in 1966, um, one of the merchandising managers for Chevrolet and the vice president of uh, it was General Motors got together and they were reading through this book that was a French-English dictionary and they found the French word for comrade and it's, I think it's camarade or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so it's, it's awful close yeah. to Camaro. They just yeah. got rid of a few words. And they got a few little things and they stuck an O in there and came up with a Camaro. And their whole idea was that this car should be a comrade, it should be a friend, it should be a partner. Companion. Yeah, exactly. In the first generation, of course, was 1967 through 69. That was your first generation Camaros. Uh, when they hit the road, you had your choice of, uh, well, they were. A, it's an F-body platform. It was available in a two-door coupe or convertible. Mm -hmm. Of course, you had the RS package. In the first generation, it was hidden headlight. Your headlights were hidden, of course. They, uh, the tail lights were revised with backup lights under the rear bumper. The RS badging, um, you know, a different exterior trim, and it was available on any of the models. But it just come with a little bit of different cosmetics. Right. Yeah. And then, of course, above that, there was the SS performance package, and that was available in the 350 or the 396 cubic and V8, mm -hmm. um, and that was obviously going to be similar to the RS, but it did have the uh, air inlets. They weren't functional, but it had those those hood vents to kind of give it that uh, scooped Camaro look. Right. Well, of course, then the SS badging. But then they had the Z28 uh, performance package, uh, and that was with further modifications, and that included a solid lifter 302 V8 four-speed transmission, power disc brakes, Two wide strips down the hood and trunk lid. Kind of crazy, kind of honestly hard to imagine. If you wanted to go down to a dealership and get yourself a 1967 Camaro V8, let's say you wanted the convertible, you could walk down there and for a little less than $3,000, you could get yourself a 1967 Camaro Is that convertible. crazy or what? It's insane. I mean, here you walk in the showroom floor and here sits this beautiful Camaro. It's a first generation, of course. You know, you're laying eyes on this thing right. for the first time it's ever been. It's not like now where they've been out forever. You right. lay eyes on this beautiful car. This thing you've been hearing about, the Chevy it, Camaro. And it's just it's just gorgeous. It's just streamlined hot rod. It's raw. And it only costs how much? Under $3,000. I mean, that's insane. Go try and buy a first generation Camaro right now. No. You're spending 30, Goodness 40, gracious. 50, 60, 70. I mean. If you want a vehicle that's not going to depreciate, go get a Camaro. Exactly. Camaros, are, they're going to appreciate. <laughs> right. It's just insane to think of that. Uh, in 1968, of course, they raised their prices a little bit, not a lot. Um, let's just say you wanted to go ahead and get, <clears throat> we'll say the 1968 Camaro, uh, the V8. Can you believe it? it it's, it's, well, that one's lower yet. That one is $2,908. Right. If you wanted to upgrade it to the special performance package, it was only $800 upgrade. 
That's insane. <laughs> that crazy eight hundred dollars is all to get the special performance package with it. I mean, it's just crazy. And then you come into the last year of the first generation, which was nineteen sixty nine, and uh, you could still get yourself a Camaro eight cylinder convertible, still only two thousand nine hundred forty dollars, still <laughs> under three thousand bucks. <laughs> and of course, three thousand bucks back then was quite a bit more than it is now. But um, I always thought that the first generation Camaros were only built here in the United States, and that's not true. Really? Yes. Well, there's two plants in the United States, and that was Norwood, Ohio, and Van Nuys, California. And I, being a car a Camaro guy, I just assumed that was where they were built back yeah. then. And that's not true. They were built in uh, uh, five other plants. The Philippines, Belgium, Switzerland, Venezuela, and Peru also really? had Camaro plants huh. back then. If you're a true Camaro guy, we have to talk about the Copo Camaro. Every year they'll do the Copo Camaros and they'll do 69 of them. Really? And it's a central order production. It's a central office production orders is what they call them now. They're not even street legal, they're just insane. It's just really? built strictly for drag racing and they do 69 of them. Uh, but the Copo Camaro, basically uh, what happened was GM, uh, they forbade Chevy from installing engines larger, larger than 400 cubic inches. Hmm. Well, the request of all the dealers, notably Mr. Don Yanko, the Yanko Camaro, yeah. for all you nuts, they were installing 427 engines in them. So the central office production orders decided, well, we'll go ahead and start offering them to you in 1969. So that's how the Copo came about. And it's just kind of become a legend because they only build 69 of them every year. And, and it's not like I can just say I want to bolt order and buy a Copo Camaro or you can say you want to. You have to put your name into the pool yeah. with a large sum of money. Hmm. And if you get drawn, you get the Camaro. That's just kind of a quick rundown of the first generation. Um, again, we're going to do some different series. Mm -hmm. You know, let's just go yeah. through. I think we're going to take a little time for each one of the generations of the Camaro because each one is just so individualistic and really iconic in its own right. Yes, and we're going to then we will lead up into, of course, the last generation and our 50th anniversary special edition that we've ordered, and it is amazing. Anyway, again, Chef J, the situation H team, out. Oh.